Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Good evening and good evening to everyone joining us for this enlightening session. I'm Shakil Ahmed and I'm here to discuss about enhancing comprehension through new interface and features of Blackboard Ultra. In a world where technology is transforming the way we learn, this session promises uh, to be an exciting journey into the domain of educational innovation. We'll be hunting into the latest updates and features of Blackboard Ultra, a powerful platform designed to make learning more accessible and engaging. So prepare to unlock the potential of this cutting edge tool as we explore how it can elevate your understanding and make your learning experience even more enjoyable. Welcome and let's embark on this enlightening adventure together. So communication is the art of sharing meaningful information with people through an exchange of experiences. In the modern era, communication technology is growing at a very fast pace. More changes in human life and behavior patterns. Modern revolution follow through modern communication devices and equipment even in education. Different e-learning platforms and content tool are specifically designed for the development of e-learning content formats, such as computer-based trainings, web-based trainings, mobile content or simulations and simulation games. The world of education is constantly evolving and so are the tools and platforms that facilitate learning. In this era of digital education, one name stands out as a pioneer in the field that is Blackboard Ultra. With its cutting edge interface and a host of innovative features, Blackboard Ultra has been at the forefront of enhancing comprehensions and engagement in the online learning environment. In this session, uh, we can explore the exciting new interface and features that Blackboard Ultra has to offer, exploring how they can transform the way teachers and students interact with course materials and promote a deeper understanding of the subject of the matter. So stay tuned to discover the power of this platform in elevating the learning experience to new high. What is anthology? Basically, uh, you need to understand about this one because uh, Blackboard we are using from last uh, four to five years. Earlier, Blackboard was working as a standalone entity, but later on it's been merged with anthology. And Blackboard basically, uh, a campus labs, campus management and I modules came together to form anthology and create a comprehensive ecosystem of ED tech solutions to serve institutions and learners around the globe. Anthology system uh, is a community of former educators and education supporters, and they are inspired by the possibilities of data-driven approaches uh, to improve and enhance the quality of education and make the better lives of learners educators and leaders in the education sector. Anthology system works to help create experiences that are more informed and personalized to support learning, teaching, and leading more effectively. And through combining products and offering solutions that span the full learning journey. So that's all from the anthology. LMS, SAS, and a combination of CRM and classroom to career. At Anthology, they offer you uh, these tools and more because a learner doesn't exist uh, inside one system alone. Their holistic ecosystem of ED Tech solution is designed to open a world of possibilities for institutions and learners. With the heart for education, and eyes set on the future, Anthology is uniquely positioned to provide dynamic uh, data-informed experience to global education community 
so that learners and educators can achieve their goal. In simple words, you can say anthology is uh, carrying LMS, SIS, and CRM together at the one stage. So let's have a look that uh, why we do have this session. Right now we are using Blackboard Learn, which is already have a very rich content and tool which can help for uh, the learners and educators to, to briefly discuss and have a track of all the records of their education. And now Blackboard, uh, after merging with Anthology, they have decided to go ahead with the uh, a major upgradation that is called Blackboard Learn Ultra. So what is the difference between Blackboard Learn and Blackboard Ultra? Not yet been uh, implemented in Jazan University, but in coming semester, we are hoping to be implementation of this new uh, big, uh, I mean like the project and upgrade for from Learn to Ultra. We are here to discuss about all these differences and all these features which we, we're going to experience in coming days. So once you have an idea that what kind of features we do have it in Blackboard Learn Ultra, so you would be able to, I mean, embrace the, this new change. I do have access uh, as a trainer for the Blackboard Ultra. So in this session, we're going to have a practical, I mean, like implementation, and I will show you what kind of uh, new features we do have in this uh, new session and in this new upgrade. The ultra course view is cleaner with a more modern design and easy to use workflows. It allows has I me mean, like uh, a powerful new tools that are not available in the original course view, like discussion analytics, etc. But keep in mind that all courses uh, will continue to use, to use the original view by default and faculty can choose whether to enable the ultra course view on one or more of their courses. Uh, no doubt there is a big, uh, I mean, like upgrade over there, but still the faculty do have the options. Either they, they want to, I mean, like upgrade to some of their courses, all of their courses, or they want don't want to use uh, the ultra because uh, it would come with the original view and you do have the options to upgrade uh, from learn to ultra over there. Here I do have um, a little demo video for uh, Blackboard Learn Ultra that how that uh, it works and what kind of features we're gonna have it. Uh, we do have a long discussion over there just for your understanding to developing the understanding. Just have a look about this video. Learning is a lifelong journey towards becoming a contributing, effective, and proud member of society. Today's learner is on a journey, a path towards self-discovery. Her journey is shaped by knowledge acquisition, but more importantly, it's about her shared experiences. During this educational journey, she'll develop a sense of self and make informed decisions about her future. Her journey is marked by accomplishments. And she'll experience new decision points and collaborative learning that exists outside of a traditional classroom. The new learning experience is supported by our ecosystem of integrated solutions that span K-12 education and higher ed. Blackboard Learn, our flagship LMS, has been redesigned to support the changing needs of learners. With the new Ultra Experience, learners receive curated notifications about their courses. Course content is instantly available, and interacting with classmates and instructors is easy. With Blackboard Collaborate, learning has no boundaries. Rich video and audio create a seamless learning experience, and learners can easily study with one another in and out of class. And our brand new BB Student app ties all of our capabilities together into a single, contained, learner-centric solution. This simple, easy-to-use mobile design helps learners move quickly through the app. Students can view course content and track progress through their course. And video and audio collaboration is fully integrated into the mobile product for learning on the go. This is a lifelong journey 
a twisting path of rich experiences and personal and professional growth. And as learners experience personalized and connected education, they build and refine their identity, gain confidence and knowledge, and transform their lives, their community, and society. This is the new learning experience from Blackboard. So have you seen me like there are a lot of different options and uh, different features are going to be introduced in the ultra it's more cleaner view more organized more uh, i mean like uh, uh, mobile devices connectivity and um, compatibility and you can find a lot more options in uh, in coming upgrade so here is the introduction to blackboard learn with the ultra experience for instructors that how uh, the instructors can interact with the Blackboard learn with ultra experience. So have a look about this one. Maybe you've heard, Blackboard is crafting a new approach for our teaching and learning environment through simple navigation and a new course experience. Let's take a look. The first time you log in, you are welcomed by the first time user experience. On-screen tips that guide you as you explore and create content. In the list where your name appears, you have access to core features. Your profile, courses, organizations, and your global pages for calendar, messages, and grades, and the activity stream displays up to the minute action for all of your courses. Right now, let's focus in on your courses. Depending on the setting chosen by your system administrator, when you access your course, you will either see the familiar original course view with the traditional Blackboard Learn layout and workflows, or you will see the new Ultra course view where everything is organized so that all the course material, interactions, and tools are right at your fingertips. You can quickly add content to your course, check the course calendar, drop in on class discussions, access the course gradebook, and even send a message. So welcome to the Ultra Experience, a learner-centered environment designed to improve user efficiency and satisfaction in a modern, comfortable, simple, and responsive interface. We hope you're as excited about it as we are. So Ultra Course Preview in Blackboard Learn with the Ultra Experience, we uh, we have just seen like there is a lot of uh, different changes. I mean, like I, I brought some very short kind of demo videos for you to make this understand, to develop the understanding that we're going to be changed over there. And um, uh, what kind of uh, preview you can have in uh, Blackboard Learn and with uh, the Ultra Experience. That must have a very good change over there. So this coming, a, a short video would have more understanding about this one. So after this, uh, we're going to have experience uh, with the uh, Uh, with a practical session over there, I mean, like, uh, I'm just showing you some kind of uh, demo videos which can help you to understand over there. Then we have to log in in the original view and I'll give you an idea that how does it work and what kind of uh, form system they have been introduced in our already Blackboard Learn system. You can fully explore your original course in the Ultra Preview before you make You can fully explore. Excuse me. Yeah, this one. So start okay. Way to take start. Blackboard Learn Ultra. Uh, so here we can have a look that how we can take start in our original environment. I mean, look, uh, this video being recorded in our environment. That how we can have uh, to log in with our uh, credentials. And um, there is no change uh, for the credential. There is upgradation uh, being in progress. And after implementation, there you, you need to follow the same uh, links to log in, same credentials, and there is no change over there. So have a look with this one. So you can find like uh, you just need to open the Google Chrome and you can go ahead with lms.jazanu.edu.sa and then you have to enter your credential and click on login. And these credential would remain the same that uh, uh, as you know that this is single sign on. So the email, user ID and password you can use everywhere. 
once you log the in, you can have uh, environment in front of you that is uh, different courses. Once you click on the course link, you can find our courses list. We do have one course uh, as a trainer. So once you click on that one, you can find out an interface in front of you. For example, if you are not looking um, uh, for the I mean the English version, you simply right click and click on the convert to English and you can have all the page in English automatically it would be uh, clicked over there. If you can see um, on left side start here we have a detailed discussion about this form that how uh, does it work and how you can make the edit uh, all this form. This form is currently available in uh, Arabic uh, but you can uh, convert into English uh, in coming days. Uh, we're going to upload the English version as well. But until unless you don't have the English version, you can go ahead and uh, simply right click on the page and uh, convert from Arabic to English uh, option. We'll have a look on this, how you can convert in English in the practical session over there. So you can find out this is um, a form where you can have basically this form is for creating the course plan before starting the semester. Uh, a course plan includes not only the goals and the content topic, but also how the topic will be taught and uh, what the students will do during the course. In order to achieve end of service uh, semester goals, students must have practice during the semester. This form uh, will include the basic information of the instructor, uh, course information, and style of the teaching course. Objectives of the teaching uh, about the course and course study requirements, uh, educational material, technical requirements, teaching policies and rules, and policies for using communication tools, and core course content, evaluation policy, uh, course schedule and time plan uh, for the course. So all these things you need to understand and discuss in this uh, form. You have to fill this form as a teacher uh, before starting up the semester. And after that, you have to follow all these instructions, whatever uh, the teaching style you have to follow, what kind of content you have to upload, all the course content in this area. And you need to mention over there all the educational activities, how you have to submit the assignments, what kind of objectives, lesson topics, and educational activities, all everything you have to mention before start. And then, um, as I discussed, that evaluation policy and course schedule, how you will go with the first week, second week, and uh, uh, till the last week. So all these things you have to uh, I mean, like mentioned before start of the session. So uh, this form is really important because this is going to plan, plan, plan your course and all the plan would have to follow all these instructions, which you can see on the screen, this one. I hope you're already using this form, but uh, for example, you don't have an idea, no worries at all. Uh, in next slide, we're going to take uh, chart and uh, I mean, like uh, we will pause the presentation, we will move uh, towards the practical session. I will log in in front of you and I will, uh, I mean, like uh, guide you that you have to log in as well on your uh, Blackboard. And we will follow one by one all the steps we have to discuss by, uh, I mean, like in detail. So, uh, in uh, now the time uh, is uh, to have a look that how you can edit the form. Uh, it's pretty easy, it's not difficult, uh, but uh, there is a small uh, demo video. You just go through with this one and then we will do it by ourselves, by logging to LMS system. So here is a short video how you can edit this one. You simply uh, click on start here and here you can find out a form in front of you uh, in every uh, I mean, like um, heading, you can have a small uh, ellipsis over there, a drop down menu. You just need to click on that one and click on edit, and all the information uh, would be available in the added form. You can uh, add your name, you can add your workplace, email, mobile number, brief biography, everything you can make editing. 
And after uh, you have been done uh, the editing, you can go ahead with the, I mean, like some kind of formatting as well. And um, in the end, similarly, like you can attach some kind of files over here and standard options are also, also available that you're gonna permit users to view this content or track a uh, number of changes and everything and a display after until the date or everything you, you can do it over here. And once you're done, you simply click on confirm button and it will be saved, all the information being saved over there. So uh, let's have live demo of Blackboard Forms over here. I would recommend everyone, you have to open the Google Form and log in with your Blackboard, uh, uh, I mean like uh, the credential. So uh, I, I'm gonna share with you guys that how you can follow all the guidance and uh, I mean how we can follow all the information and instructions uh, to edit the form and what headings, uh, what does it mean over there? We're gonna discuss in detail. So I gonna have a chance of sharing with you. So I hope you can see uh, the Google Chrome on the screen with the link open lms.jazanju.edu dot essay i hope everyone can have a look me like you can clearly uh, see my screen just let me know please okay good With the same uh, credentials, uh, with the same link, lms.jazanu.edu.sa and with the user ID and password, you can log in. Once you're done over there, click on login button. So here we go. We logged in in our LMS system, and now you can find out uh, different tabs, my institutions, courses, training, SDL settings. So I'm gonna click on the courses. As a trainer, I do have multiple courses for testing purpose. I'm gonna click on my training course. And once you click on your course, you can find out the interface in front of you, and you can find out different tabs on left side, and the third tab is uh, under under the courses. This is the second tab that is start here or if that. End. Click on that one and you can find out your form. For example, um, uh, still this form is available in Arabic. And if you want to uh, convert this form to English, simply on the uh, blank area, right click. And here on the bottom, you can find out translate to English. Click on that one. And you can see now everything, all the content has been transformed and uh, converted to English. So it would be easy for you to understand over here. The second thing is that how we can, can uh, take start for editing the form. It's pretty simple. In front of every heading, main heading, you can find out this drop down menu. Click on that one, and there are multiple options available. But uh, first, we're going to make it added. So click on edit. You can change everything. You can change uh, the name of the instructor, you can change the color and you can have a lot of different options in front of you which you can change it over here for example this is i i put it my name um so whatever i want to do i i i can do it so you can see i can delete i can add it again and here for example i'm gonna make some changes anything you can 
change over here. Everywhere you can change. Workplace um, and your email address. So everything you can have the access over here. So in uh, simply fill the information related to the instructor is um, self-explanatory. Nothing uh, is uh, in like more complicated. So uh, if we um, uh, browse the, I mean like this link, you can find out, you can attach different kind of files over here. You can drag drop from the computer and attach area on use the browser functions and files are saved in the top level folder in your course files uh, repository. So you can uh, browse the local files, you can browse the course files, you can browse the cloud services, whatever you want to do it. Uh, and the next one, standard options, if you want to permit uh, to view this content to uh, the user, user means student, so you have to click yes, by default is yes. If you want to make it offline, you can go ahead with no button. Uh, track number of views, uh, how many uh, students have uh, viewed your uh, content, uh, you can track them either is by default, it's no, you can go ahead with the yes button. And from what date uh, and time to what date and time you want to display this form course plan to the students. So you can select the timing and date for your uh, current semester from start of the semester to end of the se semester. So once you've done everything by editing, you simply click on the submit button and it's done. So it's simple, I mean, pretty simple that how to, you can use uh, this form, uh, but we are going to discuss all the uh, fields one by one. So this could help you to understand that you, how you can plan and uh, go ahead with the course planning. First, I told you that course instruction information is uh, simply fill the information related to the instructor. The next tab is course information. Um, basically, course information means information on the academic um, and recreational process, including course name, uh, course code, which teaching language you're going to use, and course descriptions. All this lie under the course information. So you have to fill one by one with this one. Um, Next, a uh, course teaching style, what kind of style you're going to pick it up over there and general objectives uh, you have to follow with this one. What are the general objectives? Uh, a course objective uh, describes what a faculty member will cover in a course. Uh, they are generally less uh, broad at goals and uh, broader than student learning outcomes. So learning objectives uh, are statements that clearly describes what students will be able to know, do or value as a result of their educational experience. Learning objectives uh, should be written so that even uh, those who are unfamiliar with the disciplinary expertise uh, can clearly understand uh, that what they can expect to gain from the course and uh, should identify measurable behaviors or quality of students work. So all these objectives need to uh, I mean like mention clearly over there. What is the purpose of learning objective? This is really important that clear effective learning objectives help both instructors and students succeed. Once you have done, uh, I mean like you have written your uh, objectives, the teacher, uh, perspective, they follow all the instructions that we have to achieve this goal. And from the student perspective, they can uh, track all the changes that uh, we started from the scratch and we have to reach on this goal. So uh, that is the purpose of learning objectives over there. For instructors, uh, clear learning objective facilitates uh, how it can facilitate making hard decisions about selecting course content, uh, designing assessments to evaluate student progress, and developing instructional activities that will facilitate a student's learning, and in the end, measuring and assessing students' learning. And what is uh, the benefit from a student perspective that clear learning objective uh, facilitate to the student in a way that making hard decisions about whether the course is a good fit for their goals and backgrounds or identifying uh, what they will need to order uh, to be successful in this course. Uh, developing the incremental skills necessary to achieve mastery of the course content, 
measuring and assessing their own progress and learning. So all these, uh, this is a facilitation in the both sides, not only the teacher side, but for the student as well. The next one is requirement for studying the course. Um, uh, it means uh, the set of academic requirements, the core subjects, which are mandatory for completion of a course. The main goal behind this is to ensure um, that all the learners take and finish courses typically observed as uh, culturally and academically essential. It includes the course that teach learners the skills and uh, fundamental knowledge uh, they would need in career and adult life. However, depending on the institution structure, a course of study may be unique uh, for different students. For instance, uh, many institutions uh, run parallel programs at a given period. Um, they uh, mean like the requirements to complete each one of them are distinct. Uh, with time, the structure of this uh, form of study has changed. So all these uh, things need uh, as a requirement for the studying of the course. The next one is uh, educational materials accompany the course. What kind of I mean like self explanatory? No need to go ahead with this one. Uh, I mean like you, know, you what kind of uh, books, references, and softwares you have to use for your material. You have to write over there the technical requirements. Um, oh, uh, what kind of technical requirements like? Um, there are other technical issues that must be considered to successfully uh, complete a course. Uh, these can include aspects such as the performance, reliability, and availability. The next uh, one is course teaching policies, really important part of uh, the course planning that any kind of rule employ a set of clearly uh, stated standards which regulates the behavior of an individual at a classroom or workplace. Uh, policies basically ref Can you hear me clearly? I hope I, I got the message of the microphone. I hope you can clear, uh, hear me clearly. Just let me know, please. You can hear me? Hello? Okay, that, that's fine, that's fine. Okay, actually I got message from uh, the notification from the Zoom. So I was worried about that. That's great, okay. So policies refers to the principle of action laid down by the top level management, uh, which acts as a guide for the decision making under various circumstances. So policies and rules for the teaching are really important and policies for the using of the communication tools, everything you need to mention over here. As I told you that in the policies, you have to go with the privacy, academic honesty, um, student works, uh, delay in submitting. So you have to mention everything before starting the semester. So what will help you that once you have mentioned everything in your policies, so none of the students can have any objection that I got delayed for this reason. So I, I don't know about the rules. I have no idea that what kind of um, like uh, ac academic honesty I have to follow over there. So once you mention everything clearly that if you go ahead with the uh, uh, theft cases, cheating, or forgery, you will punish by this way. You will you you would be expelled from the classroom. Uh, how students have to work, how they can uh, respond, how they can submit, and if, for example, delay in submitting work, what kind of punishment they can receive over there, and what kind of special needs over there. So whatever the policies and rules uh, being implemented from the management side, a teacher must have to. Uh, write all the rules and policies in this form. So this would help for the students to understand from the day one that we have to abide all the policies and rules over there. The next one is um, like uh, policies for the use of uh, communication tools in this section, communication uh, etiquette is explained that, um, okay, respect others, not to offend, not to engage in political or religious discussions, uh, and all these are outside the scope of the course and correct writing without errors. 
So you have to mention over there that, okay, respect others. Everyone is uh, respectable. Don't try to laugh or find for others. So it would not be allowed inside the classroom, not to offend. So all these things you have to follow with the, as a communication tool. So all these are really important with this. Uh, the course content, lesson-wise, uh, set the objectives, uh, and lesson topics, uh, educational activities, and criteria about assignments. And here, uh, the schedule is repeated for all units and lessons with the same mechanism. So you can go ahead and you have to mention everything. Again, uh, the similar thing that course content, that what is uh, your objective, what are the uh, lesson uh, topics, educational activities, duties, everything you have to mention in this area. Uh, what kind of evaluation policy you are going to implement over there. So you have to uh, uh, you have to give the weightage of your assignment discussion. So, so this is uh, this kind of evaluation policy is self-explanatory. Everything mentioned in front of you. Uh, by default, uh, it's been written over here. You can make changes according to your requirement. Uh, assignment after weekly lectures, 10% weightage over there, but you have to complete it the 100%. So you can reduce and increase the weightage for all of uh, all of kind of uh, content, but it's depend upon you at the end, it should be 100%. So discussion after weekly lectures, uh, short tests, midterm exams, uh, other course final tests, all these uh, things you have to manage uh, this, um, this relative weight for all the assignments. So um, course uh, schedule, this is also self-explanatory that um, uh, how you're going to manage your coursework, what would you have to teach in first week, second week till last week. So you have to uh, divide all of your semester week. For example, you have 12 or 13 week in one semester. So you have to mention everything that what would be the implementation method, time required for uh, implementation, activities, units. So you have to mention everything in this section. The time plan for the course, uh, uh, the schedule is repeated for all lectures and lessons with the same mechanism. So you have to write everything and you can copy and paste and uh, this schedule is repeated for all the lectures and lessons. Um, so it's, I think, so uh, not too difficult, not complex. You can go ahead, time plan. You can set for introductory, uh, I mean, like paragraph over there for time plan, uh, the first, the second, third, uh, some of uh, the things already mentioned over here. And if you want to change or update, you can go ahead and add the form by yourself. Uh, what is required of the student, uh, read the home page, view the course plan. All these are the time plans that how you can uh, carry on your syllabus and courses one by one. So I hope you got an idea about uh, this one. And that was all from the form section because that was our core part for the practical side that we have to discuss your course plan uh, one by one and in detail. I hope you got an idea that how you can go ahead with this one. If you have any question or anything, you can ask me. Uh, Dr. Amil al uh, please don't write uh, the employee ID in the chat box. I want you to, I, I just sent um, um, one message that how you can uh, edit your name and in front of your name, in the Zoom meeting, please write your uh, employee ID in front of your name, please. Uh, yes, Hira. Okay, let me check. Okay, wait a Dr. Hira, you can ask the question. Okay. Okay, now you can unmute over there. 
Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum assalam. Um, thank you for this uh, session. Um, sir, I have a question. For example, like um, there is a one teacher is teaching a course, but it has got three groups. So um, I want to know, like, uh, is there an option, uh, copy and paste? So yes. we can copy and move this, uh, the whole page to another course? Yes, everything you can copy and paste over there. It's pretty easy. All the options are there over. You can find out. Uh, hold on a moment. You can simply copy and paste. Uh, once you add it over there, you can. Okay. You can see, once you click on the edit button, on the uh, bottom, you can have a copy button, move button. You can do whatever you want to do. You don't need to uh, make, uh, I mean, like changes for all the courses. You just copy and uh, paste over there. So I have to copy uh, one by one, right? Yes, because all Not the, the whole page. I cannot, like, for example, how... Uh, we can uh, move uh, a quiz, uh, like, you know, we can import and export from one co one group to another group. So I, I was thinking, like, whether we have an option here. No, or we can add. Check because right now I can see this, uh, there is an option for every, I mean, like, um, objective because all, everything is a uh, little different, might possible for all the courses. You can have a uh, change of information so one by one you can have uh, i mean like copy and paste over there but let me uh, check uh, how can uh, the whole form uh, can be moved over there no worries i'll send you the solution okay but one by one you can very easily you can do that okay okay sir and okay. if it is not possible i think we can ask uh, blackboard manager to add this option here sure 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 because right now I can't see this option because I can see the option uh, one by one copying uh, all the module. But uh, good question. Uh, let me check. And if any possibility, I'll share with you guys, everyone. Okay. Okay. I have one more question. Sorry. No problem. Please go ahead. Um, there are some um, points here, like for example, I uh, some teachers did not find in their course specifications. So um, it was not there in uh, course distribution um, because we teach unified courses and we get the distribution and we get the specification. We upload it on the content here, uh, but still uh, because the Deanship of e-learning has asked us to fill this area, we are doing so. Mm -hmm. um, the point is here, if we don't find these points in these specifications or the distributions, can we skip or can we delete? Uh, well, I have no idea because uh, all these instructions from the management side. So, I mean, like you have to follow whatever they're asking you. And if you have any question, you can put your questions over there that, uh, for example, we have this kind of issues and how we can resolve over there. Okay, sir. Uh, if you can forward it, yes, please do so. You can send me the written request. Uh, so I'll try to convey my I mean, the question to them. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. Anyone else? Do you have any question or we have to move forward? Asalaamu Alaikum, sir. Walaikum Asalaam. This is Raksha here. Uh, Sir, I have watched your uh, PowerPoint presentation there on YouTube and filled my information in my different groups. So in one course, the information which I have filled, it automatically transferred to the another course. Right. And then I changed over there. The whatever I have changed over there, that information is filled to the previous. It, my, it means you have multiple courses. Yes. Okay. So, for uh, example, for say I have a uh, Victorian literature, the mm -hmm. information which I have filled over there, it automatically filled in morphology and syntax. Okay. Then I changed over the morphology and syntax in two groups. And okay. then I uh, went back to just to cross check. Then the same information was uh, copied to Victorian literature. Could you please send me the snapshot of uh, your courses and uh, this issue so we can discuss with the technical team over there, okay? Okay, sir. Thank you. And one more thing, as Dr. Hera uh, asked about copying and pasting, 
sir it is very difficult task uh, i have tried because i have two different course uh, groups of the same course so i was trying this yesterday and uh, for that i have to go to that course then copy from there come back here edit paste it here again i have to save it if i don't then i have i go back over there it didn't save it came back so oh. okay it's, I I got it. I got it. I got it. I mean, like uh, we will discuss with the technical team because uh, they are responsible for all these changes over there. I'm here to tell okay. you how you can utilize all these informations. Uh, that, uh, but uh, no worries. I'll discuss with the technical team and we'll try to bring the solution for you guys. Okay. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. You're welcome. Anyone else? So we have to move. Uh, uh, back to our presentation so is uh, so let me go ahead so tips for writing a course description uh, that is really important that how you can uh, follow different tips uh, which can help you to write a course description in uh, in a better way first you have to go the course description should not be i mean like no longer than 100 words don't try to write in a very long description which couldn't help for the students to understand over there uh, write from a student centered perspective don't try to think only uh, the uh, teaching uh, mind perspective, but you have to think that how the students uh, can easily understand the course description. So you keep in your mind that right from a student center perspective. Use present tense and active voices. Uh, use clear and simple sentences um, and make the structure and language very easy. Um, and use clear and simple uh, I mean language and use gender neutral language. Uh, don't try to uh, put them he or she, try to gender neutral language so it would be easy for the male and female to understand over there. Use common terms that uh, mean like uh, prospective students understand. So uh, not try to go with the very difficult terms, try to use the very common which are easily understandable. Uh, use industry improved technical terms and acronyms when appropriate. Uh, use generic uh, uh, terms when referencing softwares. Only use specific software names if they are the central focus of the course or if they are required for course delivery. So you have to follow these tips to write a very descriptive and very easy uh, course description. What shouldn't be included in the course descriptive? Um, you uh, course titles, uh, numbers, and levels in which the course is offered. So, uh, like all these are not included in the course descriptions, and they are in uh, I mean like indicated elsewhere. Uh, the intended course delivery models uh, like hybrid online in class are not included in a course descriptions that does not belong to uh, this area. So you have to be careful with this one. So it means, I mean, like uh, what shouldn't be included in the course? Again, I'm going to repeat this one. Course title doesn't need over here. Uh, numbers, levels, in which the course is offered. No need to tell. I mean, like in the course description, it's going to be offline or it's going to be online or uh, hybrid model that doesn't need to uh, discuss in the course description as well. Teaching style. Uh, basically, teaching sty style also called teaching methods, uh, and they're considered to be general principles, educational and management strategies for classroom instructions. Uh, teaching method uh, depends on the teacher's preferences, uh, the student's need, and the subject. The use of different teaching styles started in the beginning of the 20th century, and uh, this was due to the amount of research being uh, you know, pour into the different learning methods. Once we understood uh, that everybody learns differently, it became obvious that there need to be different uh, teaching styles to accommodate the learning styles. So in basic uh, terms, teaching methods can be divided into 
four categories with two mean variables. Number one is teacher or a student center. The second one is low tech or high tech. So here we do have the four uh, categories uh, using these two principles. Four different teaching methods can be extracted, such as uh, teacher-centered high-tech or low-tech approach, student-centered high-tech or low-tech approach. So we have to discuss what kind of these approaches are. In a high-tech learning environment, students may use uh, any or all of the following. They can uh, bring the laptops, tablets, um, collaborative uh, applications, education-based networks to connect with students around the world, software designed to facilitate gamification learning. So all these are allowed from the uh, from the teacher side. So this is called high tech, means you're going to involve the technology, you're going to allow everything, whatever they have the, in the form of technology they can bring and they can connect uh, with the other parallels inside the classrooms. Although technology can enhance the classroom environment, some teachers prefer low-tech teaching methods. The reason behind by keeping classes, uh, low-tech students cannot access modern shortcuts such as spell check, uh, calculators, and autocorrect options. Uh, this can improve a student's reading, writing, and mathematical skills. <clears throat> Uh, where they are forced to work out these issues without being answered by a tablet or computer. So some teacher would have uh, I mean like the preference to go with the high tech. They can allow the students to bring everything, but some teachers uh, do not allow them to, to improve their skills. Uh, so try to keep them as a low tech inside the classrooms. In addition, some teachers prefer to communicate with students directly. And some subjects are best delivered in this way. When students have access to a range of technology, they may become distracted and communication with the teacher may be affected. So by uh, opting for low-tech teaching methods, teachers can ensure uh, students stay on task more easily. So it depends what kind of subjects you are teaching over here. So it depends that you need a high tech inside classroom or you wanna go with the low tech. For example, uh, a very clear example over here, you are a computer teacher, uh, you're teaching some kind of software over there. So it means they can come with a high tech, it's very easily and you can ask them to find out the solutions, the coding and um, web development and many things, they can have a lot of help from uh, high tech uh, and, but for example, you're teaching some kind of, uh, I mean like a different uh, uh, like subject, which uh, don't need a different technology over there. So at that time, for example, if you're going with the low tech, and, uh, this will help uh, for the student and for the teacher as well, for not only in the form of grooming, but they can be interacted with the teacher and uh, with the class fellows as well over there. For example, you allow them the high tech, uh, they can bring all the uh, medium inside the classroom. So at that time, might possible that can be distracted and uh, the teacher could not get the results what he, he or she is expecting in their class. So all these teaching styles are really important. It depends upon you and it depends what kind of um, uh, like uh, subject you are teaching over there and you need the high tech inside the classroom or you don't need it over there. In the end, five guidelines for designing effective rules. I uh, mean like very effective. So you have to go with this one. You need to be specific. You need to be positive, adaptable, and few and sensible. All these five specific guidelines would help you to create uh, or design a very effective um, like uh, course over there. What kind of specific? Specific means uh, rules need to be as specific as possible. Don't try to um, create a very complex rules for your classroom, which, can, which cannot help you or which can bother a student more over there. Be positive uh, means state your rules in the positive rather than the negative. For example, instead of don't yell in class, uh, say speak quietly in class. So by changing the words, which can help uh, a positive impact from the students as well. The third one is adaptable, 
uh, periodically evaluate your rules and their effectiveness. If at any time a rule doesn't seem to be working, change the rule. It doesn't mean you have uh, mean like uh, uh, prepare some kind of rule and policies for the student and start of the session or start of the semester. And in between the semester, you find out this rule is making the trouble for the student. So you can rethink and change the rule accordingly. Few, keep your rules few in number. You should have no more than five rules. Don't try to go ahead with the long rule list, policy list, which couldn't help for the students. And they may be more complex and they feel it more hard to understand all the rules. So try to make it few, not go uh, with a long queue or list over there. Try to go ahead with the only five rules that would help you to control the class. Sensible, make rules that make sense make rules that make sense that's all because don't try to make the rules which are uh mean like you which are not able to implement inside the classroom or very strict rules and uh they would not be able to follow by the students over there so make the sensible rules that is the most important part and last point of this guideline so five guidelines for designing effective rules um that's all from the session. I try to bring a very comprehensive and uh, mean like practical uh, things for you from the Blackboard. Uh, I hope you got an idea that how does it works and um, upcoming upgrade, how does it look like over there and how you can upgrade over there. Uh, so if you have any questions, you can ask me over there. You already uh, have the option. You can unmute and ask me the question for related to the session, please. But one announcement over here, please everyone, I just sent in the broadcast, broadcast list that how you can uh, uh, change the replay, uh, mean like the display name. I need your employee ID in front of your name. I don't need your employee ID in the chat box. The reason behind, at the time of uh, uh, awarding the e-certificate, I definitely need your employee ID. Without your employee ID, I cannot find your name over there because you are writing your name over here in English, but sometimes we are finding the names in Arabic. So I cannot find you easily in a long list of registration. And one more announcement, uh, registration is mandatory uh, for the e-certificate. Registration and attendance both are mandatory. Uh, some of uh, the candidate are, are trying to register, but they're not attending over there. But most of them are attending the session, but they didn't get registered over there. So what is happening that even you have attended, but I couldn't manage to uh, award you the e-certificate. So I would request you guys that still registration is open. You have to go and follow the link and um, find out this course and register yourself. So it would help you to receive the e-certificate. If you're not receiving the e-certificate, it means you didn't get registered. And the second one, I would request again that you have to replace your um, uh, display name in front of your name. Uh, you have to put your employee ID, please. Dr. Alok, you uh, didn't do it yet. Yes. A good example from the, uh, Dr. Derek Shah, uh, Shama, uh, Dr. Abdul Aziz, uh, everyone, um, very good, you're following the rule. Asma Asim, Hizam, Hizam. Asma Hizam, you didn't put your employee ID, please do it. 